Hi, I'm Sophie Jury from the Holistic Directory, your gateway to holistic health and wellness. And today I have with me Louise Smart of Emotional Detox, which is energetic, holistic and integrated approach to the energy of the mind, body, soul and emotions. Welcome, Louise. Um, thank you very much. Lovely to talk. Yes, it's great. And I'm looking forward to finding all about emotional detox. So to get us started, could you tell me a little bit about you and how you discovered emotional detox? Yeah, well, I, I suppose um, I moved from doing dance. That was my training. Um, came out of my sort of a professional training in dance, really interested in the body still, but not wanting to be a professional dancer. So I went into Tai Chi and Qi Kung. When I'd gone to um, dance school, there'd been a woman there called Gerda Geddes, and she, in the audition, she was the... Um, teacher who was showing us Tai Chi and I thought she was incredible so I took up Tai Chi very seriously and I absolutely loved it but it really opened me up you know I was able to see um, the the color through and around the body the auric field and, and I could see what was happening to myself I was sort of really literally opening up receiving being able to be more receptive to my environment and people around me in a good way, but it also at the same time illuminated uh, the stress in me that accumulated through my life. And so on from there, um, I was studying and reading, and I managed to get myself a job in the West Indies in a spa, and I taught meditation and Tai Chi and Qi Kung. And leaving there, I was invited to um, work at the stress management unit at London Bridge Hospital, where I was working as a massage therapist, but also seeing people for, you know, high levels of stress. So people coming from the city, um, being signed off work. So I was working with psychiatrists and uh, senior consultants, um, heart uh, cardiologists, really working with quite, you know, the medical fraternity, working with case histories and their referrals. So it was a really interesting time for me because I had to be very responsible, obviously, to um, the clients who were usually going to have about six to eight weeks of paid um, therapy uh, with me and the doctors. So I had, to be, I had to learn fast about how to get results for people. So going on from working with stress management, I was seeing that with those clients or patients, as they were termed then, that... You, you could do a lot for their nervous system and, and really get people um, calmer and more confident. But what it would highlight was how they got themselves into the situations which were usually in some emotional issue like uh, not feeling good enough, not being able to speak up for themselves. So I could see there's this big underpinning emotional charge in people that often had to go not looked at because of the time frame. So I looked into it more and studied more about the emotional component and have seen that it's, it's our emotions that override all the other faculties, the, the mental and our, our physical and also our spiritual aspect because everything sort of closes down spiritually. So does that answer? Yeah, that's fantastic. And of course... It, people in the, who are interested in holistics and certainly people who are working in it even more so can completely resonate with the with the fact that emotions are so tightly connected with everything it's that iceberg effect isn't it that we just see the tip of the iceberg which is the problem and actually the underlying cause is is quite deep rooted so what exactly is emotional detox okay well what i what i do with emotional detox is um with uh, generally with clients I've got to combine it, not just the talking to your people. Obviously, I have to listen to people's story. I have to listen very intently um, to be able to ascertain really what needs to be worked with first. So it's, it's uh, listening and it's trying to discern where there are patterns to the, to the history that somebody's giving me, patterns in relationships, to family, to spouses, to friends and patterns in relationships to the people they work with, you will see from those patterns that there are limiting sense of identity and beliefs about themselves that are often 
unconscious and not spoken about. And, and they, that emotional energy that's linked to that drives the overall signature energy. In other words, the, the, the kind of, the, all of our energy together, our positive and negative, can distill down to what I call a signature energy. And it's that that emanates out to the world, and that's what people read us. That's how people read us. And that's what draws to us the people and the circumstances and situations that are on a similar wavelength. So what I'm looking to do with emotional detox is to identify core patterns and the underpinning negative, negative self-beliefs um, and to identify where they are held energetically in and around the body. And when I say in and around the body, they can be held in the auric field or they can be held deep in the core of our chakras. So by identifying where that stuckness is held, then I take people through a process of releasing that, which I can go into, of course. Well, I think we certainly could potentially go into it a little bit more depth, um, but I just wanted to cut off. There's a few other questions I wanted to ask as well. Yeah. Um, and obviously I'm guessing that that could be quite an in-depth discussion as to how you can break through this but I mean it's just fascinating and I would imagine a lot of people are resonating at this point listening to it thinking you know that that, that is something that would fit well with with them and, and that takes me quite neatly on to my next question which is what sort of people does it suit because I'm thinking the idea of opening up emotions and and you know sometimes the thought of figuring out what those limiting beliefs, even though we don't really know necessarily know what they are, can be quite a scary thing. And, of course, I'm guessing that you're there to make it so it's as least scary as possible. So um, yeah. that's the point. Of yeah, I mean, I hope so. Things. After all these times, I've been doing this 18 years or so now. So I, I'm pretty aware of um, how to, to draw people into a space where they're comfortable and... And I feel like all healing and all process of transformation does and will occur at exactly the right time for that person. So not everybody, you know, can take time out, um, even a weekend off, to be able to process. So I, I attract people that, that do realize that something is going on for them and are willing to spend time with themselves to be able to integrate what I give to them and to be able to have the time and the compassion for themselves to let go. Um, so it's, it's two things. I think I attract the right people because they're ready and, and I'm reassuring them that they will only ever go at the pace that is right for them and their practical daily life. You know, if they've got a job, if they've got children, if they've got... Um, you know, huge responsibilities or they're on the crest of, you know, changing jobs or there's a big um, circumstance in their, their personal life that needs to be dealt with that often brings stuff up, then, you know, the pacing of that has to be um, very sensitive. And that's my job is to really show people and nurture them. And what I offer, and I think this is what really makes me in many ways different from a lot of psychotherapists and counsellors, is that, you know, the day after their first session, they always get a call from me and I always, you know, tell them that they, in the eventuality of them feeling overwhelmed by anything that's gone on or is going on, they can call me. I mean, obviously, you know, not at three o'clock in the morning and it doesn't tend to happen anyway because um, it just hasn't over the years. But I'm available and so they get the, the what I call the continuum and they get the, the concentrated time at the beginning where you know, more stuff can come up for people because it's all possibly for the first time they're ever having a sort of counselling therapy session. Um, there's a lot to deal with. So I think that people need to know that there's a support mechanism there. So try to make it safe and and also that this is, yes, in one respect, it's, it's, it's you know, deep and meaningful. But I try to make this about... The, you know, the, the end result is that, you know, you're not, you're, you're shelling the onion so that you become lighter and freer. So I hope, and I do experience this with my clients, is that from day one, the lightening up process allows you to see 
in a in a contextualized way, in a, in a quite a sort of pragmatic way, that you're taking action not out of being a victim but out of choice, and that it's actually really going to be making you feel a lot happier from day one. You know that I don't let people go if they're you know feeling in a terrible space because the great thing about energy that's different historically from just going into your your background and history, which I feel is a bit like sweeping, you know, rubbish from one end of the room to the other, because it doesn't actually change anything. It, it makes you very knowledgeable. It makes you very, you know, uh, yeah, it makes you very knowledgeable about your past, but it doesn't necessarily change it. And the whole thing about working with energy is other practitioners know is once you start working with energy, there should be a shift in really the whole way that you feel and think, because the, the connection between your feelings and your thinking is is so linked to the heart chakra and the energy, the, the circuitry, the electrical energy that goes from the heart to the brain. You know, once you start leveraging off some of the charge of difficult emotions like anger, frustration, disappointment or hurt, once you start to leverage that off, you start to really calm the heart down and that sends a signal to the brain and the, both the brain and the heart move into this sort of um, level of entrainment. So, just, I hope that I haven't waffled on too long. <laughs> no, it creates absolute positive shifts. So, so, for someone who is feeling potentially out of kilter, but not necessarily knowing exactly what it is, they could come and have emotional detox without necessarily knowing why they're there it could just be if you if someone's feeling do you, do you see where i'm going if someone's just feeling rubbish and they're just they don't they don't really know why but they want to change it then emotional details could be a good fit it could them. be a very good thing because uh, a lot of the techniques that i use is that it, it it's the story is less important than how you feel and it's how you feel that's got the energy charge once you release that then your thinking starts to change so yes and i do a lot of clients who go i'm stuck i don't know why i just feel unhappy and they're quite numb. They might be really numb and nothing happens for about 45 minutes. Uh, and I know that basically it's so well defended, the area of vulnerability or whatever it is, that it has to be literally, we have to get the attention on the, the emotional body. And it might be diffuse. If you don't know exactly where you're feeling your pain or your hurt or your upset, it's diffuse. And there are ways, the techniques that I have, is that diffuse, and it's almost like an apathy, um, can, can be loosened and released the same way as something very intense can be. And, um, you know, me being aware of that, is that they think nothing's happening, and actually I, I'm, I know it's going to shift. So, yep, yeah, you don't have to know why. And, and I get a lot of that with, um, you know, men can be, they don't really know what's really causing something. So it's helpful to, you know, be very present in the moment with dealing something rather than having to dig around for the answers. I think that's so relevant because there are a lot of people, and certainly we have our off days, don't we? But some people, those off days become permanent off days. And you just, yeah. if you don't know where to go, it kind of, sometimes, you know, phoning a counsellor, you're not quite sure that you want to just talk through stuff. You just want to change how you feel. And so that sounds like emotional detox is, is exactly the right thing for that. Yes. So if someone wanted to uh, chat to you a little bit further, find out a little bit more about emotional detox, how it works, and, and if potentially it could be the right thing for them, or even book a session with you, uh, the best way to get in touch is to have a call or Skype you. And, of course, all the details for that are on your website, which is www.emotional-detox.com. That's emotional-detox.com. And... Uh, Obviously, they can find out more about all the different services that you do as well with the energy clearing and the couples therapy and the stress detox as well. And I think that's been really, really interesting and really um, going to resonate with a lot of people. So thank you for your time. Thank you so much. And uh, we shall find out more about some of your other things in some more interviews. Great. Thank you. Oh. <laughs>